Hi everyone, it's Cal. Of course, I'm in my little kitchen today. Um, I wanted to pop on and say hello and see how you're all doing. And I thought today I would talk a little bit about the crown chakra. Um, the chakras themselves are something that I actually never believed in. I thought, I actually thought all this mystical stuff even though I've been having strange experiences since I was a very small child, um, I thought it was all hoobie-jooby. And it's so interesting as, as I look at the course of my life, how I've come into the knowing that all these things are absolutely true and that our ancestors uh, were not, you know, smoking a lot of... Um, um, stuff. They actually knew what was going on and they were really paying attention to the human body in its most natural form and in its most natural alignment to uh, all things on the planets and in the heavens. And I guess that's what um, my book, The Goddess and Her Sacred Circle, really talks about. It talks about the alignment to uh, the human alignment to all things around us, uh, the heavens, the stars, the earth, the planet, um, uh, the cycling of the seasons and the phases of the moon and how we relate to the four directions and the four elements. Basically, it's a nutshell to um, massive connection and it demonstrates beyond a reasonable doubt that we are naturally organic and we are coming from something deliberately that is bigger than ourselves. And as most of you know, I was brought up atheist and <laughs> It's it's very uh, challenging for a small child to be having cosmic things happen to her and uh, be denied the existence of something that is not real. So uh, the, um, the trauma inside of me or the dichotomy between two worlds started at a very, a very early age. And I know that many of you can relate. So on many levels. And so today I just, yeah, I was just thinking as I was driving home the other night, I gave a lecture, a local lecture on the Goddess Center Sacred Circle. I tried to get it into two hours. It didn't really work. So um, it was really about probably 10 or 15 slides. And in the whole presentation, there's about uh, 240 slides or just a little bit less than that, 220, I think. Um, but it was still a good preamble. It went over time, um, which is interesting. I remember years ago when I first started out talking about this, I actually flew down to Beverly Hills and I gave a lecture there. And it was supposed to be a one hour lecture and it ended up being a four hour lecture. And it's funny how the time flies uh, sort of when you're having fun talking about the stuff that I didn't think anybody would relate to and everybody was relating to it. The projector didn't work. The uh, PC wasn't booting up properly. I mean, everything technically went wrong. I had no notes printed out and just wung it. And, and the room had been packed down there. Um, so it was, it was, it was interesting. So here I am, I think online is just so much easier and you can kind of go with the flow a little bit more. And again, for the third time, I'd like to talk about the crown chakra just a little bit today. So the Kundalini goes, it can be done in either directions. What we're doing here on the planet is we're forming our bodies and we are aligning our chakras, which are the, the plexus. Um, and they are levels just like God is levels, our body is levels of being. As we work up, 
outside of the physical body, there is still a huge river of souls that is all in movement and working on themselves to get into finer and finer gradations of being uh, for various reasons. And it's all self-elected. And um, within the body is the same thing. There is a river moving up in you, a river of energy, and it's all in gradations. And it's all self-willed um, through the energy that's in there and through, of course, the energy that you're applying to it consciously or unconsciously. And the river flows through you, and sometimes there are blockages, and blockages over time cause, cause illness. And, of course, the same is happening in the sky as as well and it's all being rectified so it's this huge the cosmos is really this huge fluctuating organism and we are in the image of it of the creator and the creatrix and um as it's fluctuating out there it's fluctuating in here and everything has a certain gestation time and uh of course uh, that gestation time is a birth to higher realms and it's happening at every stage right up to the big boom which is uh, nothing but a reset where the consciousness is still um, there in uh, various uh, levels of being uh, but the the momentum of it is being uh, reset, which means you could even look at it like a great woman, the universe, the cosmic universe as a great woman who's going to sleep and waking up. And when she's in her waking state, all these processes are moving. And then when she goes to sleep, everything is becoming still. So, and going into darkness. So there is the, the big bang, and then that's the birthing into uh, life. And then there is the collapse at the end where you could see the woman is going back to bed. Now you come into all of this knowledge. Um, this is just one way to explain this. I have no background in really education or in any kind of religious studies, um, which is interesting because at 11 years old, I wanted to go and study religion. But of course, my family background and none of us knew how to get education or where to go or what to do it, <laughs> you know, raised out in the boonies on a farm in the middle of nowhere. So, um, when you get, when the energy is flowing through your body during the Kundalini, and I know that sometimes people have certain ail ailments and sometimes these ailments, what they're doing is they're, they're, um, resetting your chakras because they're trying to get your chakras in alignment so that the body can zip up and do the Kundalini. So you can have these peak experiences. And so I think more importantly, but it's just as 50% as important. Uh, the father aspect is just as important as the mother. The mother might even be more important because she roots you. She gives you your body for life and your GPS out into the cosmos. So it, the mother experience is critical. And so getting rooted to the earth, the blood red cube, and that's the beginning of the whole um, Kundalini is rooting, uh, but it can start from the top down as well. Um, and it can happen in increments where you have part of it happen here, part of it happen maybe on another day or another time, and part of it happen later. So it's really interesting that um, uh, after you connect to the web, the download that you get, I mean, it was pretty much like night and day. All the things I believed in were all false and all this other stuff that was being presented to me as truth. I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. And so I followed the prompts and I found all the sort of, as you would say, the science behind it. 
and it was I was led from here to there to here so that my linear mind could accept it all. So I was taken in in through a cycle and shown the information at every um every part of the cycle and I was writing it down and I thought god this stuff doesn't mean anything and it wasn't until many many years later that I sat back and I said wow that was done in a cycle and wow there's great uh, it shows you know progression all all through it so the the linear mind is is very juvenile and the body's really leading us on the path through life through the cycle but connection to the father can serve many many things um because after you root to the earth you root to the father and you're done with the sun cycle once you connect to the father the when you connect to the whole experience of uh doing the kundalini when you hit that crown chakra is something incredible um as i was locked in the kundalini at these great depths of samadhi my ribs it was like my ribs were being absolutely completely ripped apart like a mac truck pulling it this way and a mac truck pulling it this way and my heart was coming out of my body and wanting to go back to where it came from which was kind of bizarre and it was going towards this great darkness this mother entity and i only knew that through feeling um uh, and I had this silver cord coming out of my head that was like yay big and I was kind of balancing I was holding it it was through my focus and I was focusing on the heart so I was in absolutely excruciating pain and I mean excruciating and I think at this lecture the other day I was telling them I said well um, you know I gave birth to a child and I she was late she was uh, just under nine pounds, and I had an episiotomy. And those of you that don't know, you're cut from the vagina to the anus when you have an episiotomy. Sorry about these details. And I had absolutely no freezing. The child was breached. I had a big kind of masculine doctor who had tats from here to hear every part of his body was tattooed but he'd been delivering for 25 years and this was before tats were uh, fashionable so this was you know 30 years ago and he had to put his entire big humongous muscular arm up inside of me and turn the baby around and all of this was done with absolutely no freezing and let me tell you it was really painful it was the most painful thing I'd ever felt until I did the kundalini and of course, I force grew the Kundalini so I can understand it's, you know, this is happening to us gently and through time and through rebirthing and, uh, but force growing it, especially when you come at the Kundalini with so much power and so much focus, um, it meets you there. It, it takes you to the greater heights you're knowing is beyond a reasonable doubt so the amount i hope i'm being clear the amount of pressure you go into the kundalini with is met with the same amount of pressure of the truth and i i remember at one point and i'll never forget when i'll never forget that because wow it was outrageous so i was holding this this infinity mac trucks on my head and I was focusing on the heart in love and the love, the deep, deep love, which was coming from my connecting to the mother. She was uh, flooding. I was being flooded with this incredible love, which was sustaining the focus of my mind uh, uh, to connect to the father. And that focus was unbelievable later on I kept meditating and later on I stopped meditating because I actually um after all this meditation had gone on for uh just under a year and I stopped because 
um, I was exhausted. I was just exhausted uh, because I'd gone to deeper and deeper levels and you will be challenged. You keep going, you keep getting challenged. You can go as deep as you want, but um, there were other things that were calling my attention in life. And so I came back, I thought I was going to break my jaw in meditation because once your focus starts to waver and you've been holding all this power, it sort of starts to go kind of wonky. And if it's not aligned, you can actually damage yourself. And I thought that's it because I was holding it. I was holding my focus deeply in meditation one day, but it wasn't quite on par. And I could feel that I thought my jaw was going to splinter because I was holding so much force together. But anyways, when I got up, uh, prior to that, when I had the Kundalini experience and I hit the crown chakra, I, uh, when I had, when it was like my, um, my rib cage was being absolutely ripped open and I was holding this power um, from the top of my head, I could actually see it, um, this huge spiral emanating from my crown chakra and then later on it was just spewing from my crown it was incredible uh but i remember thinking oh i was so angry because i was i wanted to know absolute truth and i wanted to know why why are we here on this planet why do people do all these horrible things to each other and i just remember thinking i was actually quite angry and i was thinking F you, you will not break me. And I was holding all my power in. I was just so determined to find out. That was it. I was taking it as far as I needed to go to find out what the heck was going on because I was confused in this land for a very long time, pretty much my entire life. And um, so when I broke through, that's after the crown after the bird flies around your head and uh, you break through to the other side, I came up and I, I sort of landed on my feet somewhere. It was kind of like I sort of boom came and landed in this beautiful place that was golden. And it was like everything was made of these beautiful yellow diamonds, everything was glittering. And it was just a second before I realized what it was that glittering. The feeling is like you are arriving in a castle filled with the highest nobility. The, and the feeling of safety is so incredible and the feeling of I am home is is there as well and this feeling is so all-consuming and as I landed there a being in front of me that's what the glittering gold was the glittering gold is all these beings they are the father aspect is uh, the same size of us all together. And the love is beyond anything imaginable. The love is so, like I said, all consuming. And it's at such an incredible level, this love. It's exuberant love. It's different from the mother. It's exuberant love where her love is deep, 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 compassionate love and uh, protective. And um, it's just too different. She is the moon. Her light is delicate like the moon. Uh, and, and she is the great all. And while this was before I experienced the mother, I went to the father and it wasn't until later that the mother summoned me. She just summons you just by even the mere thought, whereas you go to the father on your own steam. And when I arrived, a being turned around in absolute joy and welcomed me 
And it was all the beings sort of in the castle all turned around. It's not like there was a castle, but it was all glitterly and it felt like this huge, noble, beautiful castle in the sky. And the 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 welcome was so jubilant and like a father welcoming his darling son home even though i'm female it it only has to do kind of with the archetypal energies um so this feeling was father it was male and we're going in that direction um and or we could stay with the mother or going with the mother i just know for me i can't say this is the definite but um for those of us that choose we are going in this direction and then after many incarnations infinity of course i'm sure we die into the mother she is the all if we so choose um everything is elective nothing is nothing is forced of course you're you're allowed in the system to elevate your consciousness and of course the mother wants you to elevate your consciousness because she wants you to know her and she wants to love you and uh she wants you to know of her love and she wants to reunite with you and it's just an incredible love story i did not expect any of this of course i really did not and um Later on, I was presented with all my greatest fears through meditation, which just appear. Of course, I had no religious background of fears from religion because I had no fears of religion. Um, what can religion do to me? I had none. And, but I did have fears of other things that formed you know, like natural disaster things and things like this. And it forms and it challenges you. And I wish somebody had told me what I'm about to tell you right now, that if you're going to these deeper realms and you're being challenged, surrender, which is die to it, which means allow it. As soon as you allow it, the mirage disappears and you are rewarded. So um, I wished I had known that at the time. I was rewarded. I received the nimbus from the mother as well as the father. Uh, the father, I got it on my own steam, and the mother rewarded to me for my efforts, uh, which were extreme. Um, I did not know any of this uh, going into meditation. I had no idea. Mother, father, religion, zero. I had nothing. I had just read some stuff by Hermes Trimagestus that says go into meditation will be rewarded. And of course I was, I was seeking some kind of reward in life. I wasn't getting it out here. So I thought, okay, I'll try in there. It was done kind of out of desperation and it was a real challenge because at the time when I started meditation, I was really ADHD. There was no way I could sit still, not even for five minutes. I mean, I was going from the second I popped out of bed at seven in the morning till late at night, you know, scrubbing my house, scrubbing my kid, uh, working on things, painting. I was always in constant movement. So going into meditation was really challenging for me, but I did it just in little increments. If I tried to do it all at once, it never would have happened. But I was starting with 10 minutes. I thought, well, I can get through five minutes. And then I started with 10 minutes after that. I started really, really, really low because I I don't know why I did it. I just started really small because I just couldn't last more than five minutes. And then I'd gotten up to 14 hours. But I'll tell you, when you go into that deep, deep med samadhi meditation, it is, you know, an hour of it is like, Oh, it's like days of sleep. You just feel so refreshed and rejuvenated when you come out. And now I'm starting all over again with 10 minutes a day, getting back into it because I really, I got obsessed with the research and that's what also made me break down. So my mind was exhausted from the intense meditation I was doing 
and of course I was I came back to work and I was going to work every day so I was working eight hours and I was researching at night and I wasn't replenishing my mind the mind needs to rest so when the mind does not get any rest it breaks down and that's why working out is so important you have to keep your body strong um, so yeah I just was thinking about that whole experience of, of arriving at the castle and then of course after that I couldn't sustain uh, that degree of vibratory love it was such a high degree that I fell backwards I felt myself falling backwards and I spiraled down this huge spiral from out in the cosmos back into my body and then beyond right down to uh, where I started and I saw every life I'd ever lived as I was going through these massive spirals and they were spirals of light and that's what we're doing we're all building up every day as we get up we're we're working on our little spiral of light which is actually a big spiral of light and we've been working on it for centuries thousands of years thousands the sun cycle I think it's 24,000 years I have to look it up I can't remember but We've been in this cycle for a very long time, uh, morphing up to the height of human. And we're still building our, building our mind body and building the connection. And we're working up on this huge spiral. And uh, we will eventually reach that light, that father light, which we started from as a little particle in the earth. Uh, and before we started with that little particle, we were just, we were smoky um, uh, carbon that is um, excremented from the stars. So the stars poop, they poop out carbon, and that's what we were. We were still had consciousness. There was still consciousness from the stars in that poop. Uh, but it just wasn't great consciousness and we started there and then with the with a little bit of light with the with the light you can see it as the seed that impregnates uh, the whole sets off the whole system we began each of us so we actually are starlight as well as um, as the dark smoky stuff is coming from the mother so I saw this in meditation I can't really uh, I haven't you know looked at this through a tele um, a microscope and I'm not a biologist but I have I have spent my life wanting to know what is going on and it was given to me um, and it was satisfying knowing this and now, now that I know this, which I have seek to know my whole life, now I'm kind of like, okay, uh, what next? Well, the code is next, finding out the code, because I love a good mystery, and seeing how it works and how it can help people. So that's on the agenda now. Uh, but if you have any great thing that you deeply troubles you and you wish to know meditation will give it to you and more if you go into this deeper realms now or uh, deep meditation uh, later you can go into the deeper realms if you so choose um, I was talking to someone who uses hallucinogenics the other day to do meditation and do their soul seeking and everything. But there is a bit of a problem with the hallucinogenics and I don't recommend it. I mean, if you're experiencing very little, I can understand. But when you're sort of dependent on the hallucinogenics and you're doing kind of a lot of them, the body mind actually cannot take a lot and I know maybe some of you have read Timothy Th Timothy Leary's eight levels of consciousness Timothy Leary was I think he was a PhD at some university I think so don't quote me on this but you can look it up and he wrote he, he did a lot of experimenting with uh, LSD and things like that and he got into it but there is something 
not a hundred percent right about that and i can't put my finger on it uh but it's not totally organic even though the argument could be well you're eating you know you're eating things that are from the earth fair enough but the human genome was made to meditate the human genome was made to pull all that force into the center and that is what is being grown here our strength our ability to focus our ability to control our mind ourselves without the help of any kind of hallucinogenics or anything else we are growing in this strength of mind and mind just isn't in the head the king and queen live here but mind is all throughout the body and this is what we want to uh, unite to we want to unite the mind body and expand our spirit and get that gps um, and have that link as soon as we can uh, I like everything like yesterday, but you know, uh, remember you do have infinity to do this. Um, but I do want to just say, uh, be a little careful with the hallucinogenics. Um, I don't recommend them at all, but I can understand, you know, everybody has their own way of, of doing things sometimes. And, uh, but the whole reason of being on this planet is to build your focus. It's to build your self-control, your ability to control your mind, and that means harness the mind, harness it in your body. And for, uh, I don't know if any of you have read the Bhagavad Gita, uh, I'm gonna try to say this right, Bhagavad Gita. I've read that many times and it's fantastic uh, because it uses a lot of metaphor, really excellent metaphor to help you understand how you are harnessing all your desires, you're harnessing your impulses, you're harnessing the whole works of your mind or what you think is your mind and you are controlling it. And that is tricky. Yes, I did the Kundalini. Do you think I could control myself eating chocolate today? No, I went hog wild on it and that is where I'm, I'm starting now is to control some of my food impulses because I love nature and there are some things that I kind of go a little cuckoo on. This is, uh, this is almost raw. It's almost a hundred percent. And, um, uh, yeah, so there is work still to be done and, uh, that's where I'm at. And, trying to make it as natural as possible. I mean, this chocolate has caffeine in it and I'm trying to take the caffeine out of my life as well. Um, and the sugars and there is a little bit of sugar in here too, which I'm not too crazy about. Um, uh, but, and I have tried making my own chocolate, but really trying to do things yourself and control yourself, um, without, any kind of stimulants is, I think, and I promote this, is a very good thing to do. And it's a hard thing to do, and it's something we kind of take for granted. And, and a lot of time we think we're doing that, but we're really not. So really being vigilant to what is actually transpiring uh, rather than uh, what you believe is just transpiring. Um, but this video is over half an hour. I hope that some of you got something out of this. And uh, yeah, I did just want to talk a little bit about the castle in the sky because the feeling of homecoming was so pronounced and so fantastic that uh, it's, it is a beautiful thing. And um, yeah, if you're deep into meditation and you're, you might be getting close to having that experience and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. So I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of this video and um, nice to see you and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone. Bye for now.